Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Connie's Back Porch and to another yoga class. My name is Connie Brogan, and I am one of the teachers and yoga coordinators at the Clouds Yoga Center here on St. Simons Island in Georgia. Right now, our physical studios are all closed. However, many of our teachers are going to provide yoga practices that can be accessed on YouTube by searching and finding the club on the YouTube site and clicking on to one of our practices. In this way, you can feel free to do yoga in your home, away from crowds, and still get your workout. The owners and management of the club and the clouds had to close their doors because of the viral infection that's plaguing the world right now. And we want to provide our students with the ability to practice with us, whether it be in the studio or wherever the rest of us are shooting these videos. So here you get to enjoy the green space, you get to hear the birds singing, and you get to practice with your teachers. And we're really happy to be able to provide this to everyone. So with that being said, if you haven't already found our site on YouTube, please find it because I previously downloaded a pranayama practice. I would like for that pranayama practice to be your centering so that you're ready for the practice that I'm about to do with you today. So find the pranayama practice, perform the pranayama practice as your centering, and then come back to this video for your yoga practice. Namaste, we'll begin here, taking a deep breath and exhaling with an ah. Take another deep breath and exhale ah. I invite you all to join me in the sound of Om to start our practice today. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Oh. Adiyom Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Assuming your easy sit position. Make sure that your sits bones are grounded, moving the flesh away if you need to, to find those sits bones points. If you have a cushion, a blanket, perhaps folding it up and placing it under your sits bones so that you have a lift in your hips and allow your spine to lengthen. You can keep your eyes open or closed throughout the practice, whatever works for you. I will be doing your practice with you, so you can view me on your screen and see what I'm doing if you're not sure. I am going to post a series of practices, each lasting 20 to 30 minutes. You can do these separately, or you can string them together. So first you would do your pranayama practice, and then you would string these practices together. This will be practice number one, which will be mostly grounding, mostly a warm up for the physical practice when we come to our feet. So from here, I invite you to begin with Sufi grinds. These circles that you're making, make them as big or as small as you like. Keep your spine straight 
or you can allow yourself that beauty of letting your head and your neck and your shoulders all become involved in these circles. Breathing very deeply using your complete breath, the breath that I instructed in the Pranayama practice previously posted. Let your breath remain full throughout the practice. So as you breathe in, remember to breathe into the deepest part of your lungs, taking in the amount of air that the lungs will hold, approximately three gallons. Make these circles smaller and just a little tighter. And then coming into stillness, let's reverse the direction of our circles. So moving in the opposite direction. And as I said, you can make these circles as big or as small as you like. You can let the head hang down at the front of the circle. You can make small circles with your head as your torso makes the circles. When we do Sufi grinds, we give our intestinal organs and glands a nice massage doing a little compression at the front of the circle and squeezing out old blood and massaging the liver and the pancreas and the stomach and the gallbladder. Breathe and allow the breath to nourish the body and quench the organs and then make these circles smaller and tighter and then come to stillness. Let's take a big inhale in and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Audible breath. Inhale, fall out breathing. And, and then let's take ourselves down onto our backs. Lower yourself down gently. Bring the arms overhead and stretch into a full body stretch. Moving those legs down away from your hips as if they're trying to walk away. Spread your toes, spread your fingers. Slide your rib cage up away from your waist. And then take your breath deep into the body. And feel the breath. Inflating the, lung, the ribs, the belly, the chest, as if you're blowing up an inflatable device around the torso. Breathe and stretch and reach. And on the exhale, draw the left knee into the chest. Draw that knee in. Soften your shoulders. Pick up your head. Look down at your chest. And then lower the head with that tilt of the chin towards your sternum and create length in the back of your neck and keep the appropriate curve intact in the cervical spine. Rotate your ankle here several times. Left knee in, left ankle rotating and reverse the rotation. Then hook your left leg over your left arm, like you're throwing your leg over the arm of a chair. Take your right arm out into a half T position. And on the exhale, let's open that left knee out to the left, staying stable and grounded on the right hip. In other words, don't let the right hip rise up. Press the right sacrum, the right side of the sacrum back down into your mat and breathe, breathe down into the adductor, to the inner thigh on that left leg. A subtle stretch for that short muscle. And then inhale back to center. Take your left arm out from under your leg. Take your right hand onto your left knee. Your left arm out into a half T position to the left. A deep breath in and marry the movement as you draw the left knee all the way down to the right. 
keeping that left shoulder grounded. You can choose here what to do with your head and neck. You can simply look up or you can look over the hand to the left and breathe. In the previous pose, you lengthened your adductor muscle. In this pose, you're lengthening along that outer left hip, down through the IT band, down through all the way to the outside of that knee. Feeling a little stretch here in that left glute, perhaps reaching into that piriformis muscle. You can stay here, or you can choose to lift that right foot up towards your buttocks and reach down with that left arm, grabbing the right foot, keeping that left shoulder blade on the ground, and come into cat, catching its tail. A quadricep stretch for the right leg. This is optional. No need to grab the foot. If you are holding on to the foot, I want you to breathe down the front side of your right thigh as you stretch the quadricep that originates at your ilium and attaches to your kneecap. Long, strong muscle. If you're holding the foot, release the foot. And then on an inhale, bring that left knee back into your chest. Slide your right foot on the mat and cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Take your left hand through the cross legs. Take a nice big inhale. And on the exhale, let's lift the right foot off the floor and clasp your hands behind your right thigh coming into reclining pigeon pose. Now notice where your chin is. If you've tipped your chin up toward the ceiling or the sky, wherever it is you're practicing, tip it back down toward the sternum and draw the right knee in as close as you feel physically possible for your body until you feel the resistance in the glute on the left. Continue with your full breathing, belly, ribs, and chest breath, dirga breathing. And when you feel the sensation beginning to fade away in that left hip, draw the right knee in just a little closer and establish a new edge. One more breath in and one more breath out. And on an exhale, we're gonna drop that right foot down. We're gonna cross the left leg completely over the right leg, like a lady sitting in a chair. Open both arms into a T position. Make sure the back of that neck is long, your jaw is soft, your brow is soft. And on an exhale, we're gonna take those knees down to the left. And I want you to pay particular attention to your as-is bone on the right side of your body, that hip bone. And feel this lengthening around the hip bone as you stretch the front portion of your iliacus and psoas, your hip flexor muscles. Those muscles originate at the lumbar spine and wrap themselves around the front of the body, around this as-is bone and attach into the lesser trochanter of the femur. These muscles are strong muscles as they need to hold your body, your torso, onto your legs. I want you to take a deep breath and focus that breath into the right as is bone and feel how the breath completes this stretch. I hope you all are enjoying the sound of the birds, the sound of the breeze. It's a beautiful day on St. Simon's. Inhale, come back to center. Uncross the legs, draw the left knee in, extend the right leg out, 
draw that left knee in as close to the body as you can. Extend the toes up to the sky, left toes. Clasp your hands behind your thigh or behind your calf. You can hold behind the calf provided your shoulder blades stay grounded. The only place I ask you not to pull on is the back of your knee. So find your holding point here. Take it. somewhat and that's okay I want you to feel this in the hamstring on that left leg so on this left leg now you have lengthened your adductor inner thigh abductor outer thigh you've worked with your twist in the glutes and now the hamstring and release your leg, flex your heel, and slowly lower the left leg down, 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 all the way down. And then just take a moment here to be aware of what you've done in your body. Notice the difference between your left leg and your right leg. Notice if you feel more grounded on the left side than the right side. This is what your yoga practice will do. Inhale the arms overhead for another big full body stretch, reaching and walking those legs down away from the hips, sliding those ribs up away from the waist. Breathing the full three gallons of air those lungs will hold and expanding the rib cage, both front, back, and sides. And on the exhale, draw the right knee into the chest. Spread the toes on both feet. Tip your chin down towards your sternum. Soften the shoulders here. There is no need to have any tension in the shoulders. You may have a little yang energy there in the forearms and that's fine. They're drawing that knee in towards your body. But nothing in the shoulders, no shrug here. And then let's cross that right leg over the right arm as we did on the other side extend that left arm out to the side and take a nice big inhale and on the exhale we're going to open the right knee out to the right while staying solid and grounded on the left side of our sacrum our back body Breathe into your inner thigh, and remember that wherever your awareness goes, prana flows. Prana, this is your life energy. This is your life. The breath that comes in. And then on an inhale, we're going to bring that right knee back to center. We're gonna take that left arm out and bring it out to half T position, right arm, excuse me, right arm out to the right, left hand on the right knee, a big inhale, and on an exhale, we're gonna draw that right knee down to the left, keeping that right shoulder blade grounded, breathing, and breathe so deeply here, so deeply, that the top of that right shoulder lifts up off the mat with the inhale and returns back to the mat with the exhale bringing your attention up to your neck if it feels appropriate for your neck you can turn to look over the fingers of that right hand if you want to try cat catching its tail on this side Simply bring that left heel up to the buttocks, reach down with your right hand and grasp that left foot. Keep that right shoulder blade on the floor and try to line up your right upper thigh 
with the outside left edge of your mat until you feel the resistance in the quadricep on that left leg underneath it. So I may make a mistake from time to time and call right or left, but if I catch myself, I'll let you know. So right now, your right leg is underneath of you. Or, uh, see, that's it. Your left leg is underneath of you. Your right leg is on top in the twist. Your left leg underneath of you. You're getting a quadriceps stretch. The right leg that's on top, you're getting an abductor stretch and an IT band loosening. If you're holding the foot, release it. On the inhale, we're gonna come back to center. Extend your left leg straight out on the mat. Draw that right knee in. Take those right toes to the sky. Hold, press up through the toes and down into the sacrum on your back body. Notice what you're doing with your chin, always protecting your neck either clasping behind that right thigh or behind the right calf. And notice when we do side to side movement, which side of the body feels tighter? Because we are not symmetrical. We're different from side to side. And on an exhale, draw that straight right leg toward the body. And breathe, don't hesitate your breath at all, ever. Breathe deep. Release your hands down, flex that right foot, and slowly lower the right foot down, 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 all the way down. One more time, big full body stretch. Paying attention now to how much more symmetrical you feel now that you've stretched both legs. Bring the knees into the chest, hold behind the thighs, Tip your chin down to your sternum, and we're going to do a little rocking and rolling here on our spine. If this is not suitable for you or contraindicated for any reason whatsoever, please just meet us in a seated position on your mat. For those who want to rock and roll, it'll be an inhale back and an exhale up. So several of these movements, rolling on the spine, And the next time you roll up, I want you to roll up to a balance. So here we are in upward boat. You can release your hands. That would be a, another level. You can smile because it's always nice to loosen the jaw. We talked a little bit about stretching those hip flexors. And I think I forgot to do it on one side, but that's okay, we'll get to it. Anyway, here we strengthen the hip flexors by bringing the origination point of the hip flexor close to the insertion point, and it makes them strong. So while they need to be long to give you that good posture, they also need to be strong to hold our torsos onto our legs. And then from here, bring the feet all the way down, lift up, and exhale round the back. Inhale up and exhale round. Inhale up. And on an exhale, let's come onto our hands and knees. So we really work that lower body. We're gonna take this work up into the spine and up into the upper body. So I want you to come into your tabletop, making sure your knees are under your hips that your wrist, elbows, and shoulders are stacked nicely. Now here, if you have a wrist issue, if you can't bend the wrist, you can take your wrist just a little bit forward toward the front edge of your mat so that you have a stagger in your wrist, elbow, and shoulder. Or 
you can roll up the front of your mat and use the front of your mat to cushion your hands and your wrists. So you find what works for you here. And then I want you to think about your tailbone and I want you to lengthen it. Not tucking it, not tipping it, just lengthening it. And think about pressing the floor away from you so that you don't end up hanging off your shoulder muscles. Press the floor away from you. Your head and your neck, they're in complete alignment with the top of your spine. So the top of your spine is pointing toward the front space right in front of you there. So the crown of your head is pointing in the same direction. I want you to pull the belly button and the spine together towards each other and take a nice deep breath in. Starting with your tailbone on the exhale, reach that tailbone down towards the floor, let your back round up and let your head and neck drop last. Your tailbone is the rudder and you're going to use it to steer these poses. Inhale, lift your tailbone, let your ribs get pressed up against the front of your body, lift your head, neck and chest up last for cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Let your head shake yes and no here. Take a breath in and stay in your cat pose. Take a breath out and see if you can round that back just a little more. And then on the next inhale, let's come into cow pose. So we're tipping that tailbone up. I want you to think about where your pubic bone is, down here. And I want you to pull your belly button down towards your pubic bone. And feel the lengthening of your rectus abdominis muscles when you do that, lengthening those six pack muscles. Then I want you to think about your sternum and pull it up towards your throat. At the same time, you're pulling your belly button down and get a good long lengthening for those muscles and also for the esophagus. This helps with acid reflux. So if you ever have that and come into cow pose and hold, breathe here. Don't just hold your inhale, breathe. Exhale, let's come into a puppy stretch. Bring your hands to the front edges of your mat, your heart to the floor. Bow down. And on an inhale, let's slide up into upward facing dog, but let's modify it here. Let's keep our knees grounded. Knees are grounded, lift again. Again, the sternum comes up and the belly button comes down. And then slowly we're gonna lower ourselves down and we're gonna work a little bit on the upper body. I'm not sure you can see me here. Let's extend those arms out into a T. And then we're gonna turn on to our left cheek. We're gonna slide our right hand under our right shoulder. Take a nice big inhale here. And on the exhale, roll all the way over onto your left side, bringing your right foot down on the floor behind you. Again, you can keep that right foot on the floor or you can choose to extend that leg out, resting on the big toe side of the foot for another hip flexor stretch. So a deltoid stretch here for the upper shoulders, working into the hip flexors as well. Use your breath, breathe deeply into the right side of your body, into that left arm and then on the exhale roll all the way over coming into half frog with your right leg the left arm that's extended out behind you bring it straight off the front edge of your mat so that it's right at the back of your head we're going to move into a thoracic spinal twist here so on your inhale, I want you to roll over onto the back of your head, bringing your head onto the opposite side of that extended arm. 
and taking this right arm behind you and breathing. So we do a lot of spinal twists, but a lot of our twists affect only the lumbar spine. So this is a thoracic spinal twist. Although those 12 discs do not have a lot of movement, this is a really nice twist to help break down tight myofascial tissue in the middle back and to also lengthen some of the spinal muscles. And on an exhale, I want you to roll back over onto your bellies, extend your legs out long, draw both hands under your shoulders, bring your forehead to the mat, touch your big toes together behind you, and inhale into simple cobra pose. Head, neck, and chest lifted, ribs grounded, belly button grounded. You can choose to stay right here. You can choose to come into Sphinx pose, or you can choose to peel those ribs up to keep your belly button grounded. Shoulders are relaxed down. Toes are touching. Cobra, your legs are the tail of the cobra. Touch those toes. And then if you choose, you can pull the belly button up off the mat and keep your pubic bone grounded. This is full cobra pose. Strength for the arms, triceps, biceps. Sphinx pose, stay where you are. And then I want you to release the belly button, keep the ribs lifted, shoulders down away from your ears, ribs grounded, head, neck, and chest lifted. And then I want you to bring your right cheek down on the mat, bend your legs, and windshield wiper your feet side to side. Breathe deeply, let your breath open those front ribs. Feel the front ribs pressing against the front of your mat. Reset your back with this windshield wiper pose so that we don't immediately go to the next pose, but we take a counter pose here after a cobra. Lower your legs down. Extend your arms out into a T. You're resting on your right cheek. Take your left hand underneath your left shoulder. Take a nice deep breath in. And on the exhale, roll over onto your right side, bringing your left leg behind you. Now, again, the left foot can stay grounded or you can extend that left leg out resting on the big toe side of the foot and get that lengthening for your hip flexors. Find your breath. And on your exhale, bring that left knee into a half frog position. Now there's a right arm that's extended out behind you. You can't see it. I want you to bring it off the front edge of your mat. And on your next exhale, I want you to roll onto the back of your head, open up that left arm let it dangle and let's do our thoracic spinal twist on the opposite side breathe and on the exhale let's roll back down onto our bellies and this time, I want you to bring your hands to the outside edges of your mat. Bring your feet to the outside back edges of your mat. And press yourself up into seal pose. If seal pose doesn't work for you, then let's come back down into Sphinx. Hold your seal pose. Keep your shoulders from inching up towards your ears by pressing 
the floor away from you as if you're trying to slide your hands off the front of your mat, only they're glued there. Smile and think about the cleansing that's happening in the area of your kidneys and the conditioning that's happening for your adrenal glands. So deep back bend, same as our cobra, little deeper than cobra. Breathe into the belly, breathe into the ribs, breathe into the chest. And then let's lower in to crocodile pose. Bring your forehead to your hands. You can bend your legs here and do the side to side windshield wipering to reset the lower back. And then finally dropping your feet and bringing yourself up and back into child pose. Now, what we just did is part of a practice. It's the warm-ups, the grounding poses, which I feel are real necessary right now because most of us are ungrounded we are being given information that causes us to become unsteady and unstable. And these grounding poses connect us to the earth, which is the element of our first chakra, our earth chakra, our root chakra. So combine this with my pranayama practice and you have yourself an hour's practice. In the next days, I'll bring more practice to you and you can pick and choose what you want to put together for your own personal practice. I appreciate each and every one of you and I wish you all the very best. And from here, let's come back into hero pose. And you can take yourself down onto your backs and experience your Shavasana on your own. Arms out, feet wide, sort of taking a bit of a pentacle shape. Take a deep, full breath in and release with an ah. Let your lips and your teeth Stay slightly parted. Your eyes rest in the back of their sockets. Your chin tipped down toward your sternum. Your toes loose, your feet moving slightly away from each other in a completely relaxed fashion. Feel the energy pulsing in the palm of your hands. The tips of your fingers rounded. Take the next few moments, breathe, relax, feel, watch, and allow. Remain grounded, remain stable. Take this opportunity to slow down and to find joy in the sound of the breeze, in the sound of the birds, in the bright sunshine. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. Om Shanti, Shalom, and Peace. Namaste.